start down here. The beloved, out of print, Teenage Mutant. Okay, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Wolfling Games and its source books are sought after collector's items that have enthralled generations since its release in 1985 as one of the first licensed TMNT products. Yeah, it's revised. It's not the black text one, but you know what? It's good enough. It's actually freaking awesome. They're returning to print as two deluxe hardcover collections of the RPG and source books. And we're going to find out. I've had questions like, how many source books is it? Is it all of them? Does it include Trucking Turtles? Does it include the GM screen? I don't know. We're going to find out. Each is being completely remastered by industry veteran Sean Owen Robertson and presented in full color. And Kevin, oh, sorry, uh, Sean Owen, and presented in full color. And Kevin Eastman, co creator of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, will also provide a new painted cover. By the way, a lot of people said that they really like the layout of Titan Robotics. I think we got some good things coming, folks. Uh-oh. Bonus materials includes an array of new artwork, never before seen behind the scenes info and art, plus remembrances and tributes by renowned comic books RPG creators, including Eastman, Peter Laird, Freddie Williams II, Stephen Cummings, Sophie Campbell, David Peterson, and many, many more. Quote, this is incredibly exciting. I am 1,000. It's not even a real number, but he's 1,000. <laughs> to help bring this historic and original TMNT role-playing game series back in a truly deluxe collector's edition that will thrill original fans and open the door for new ones. I love that last part, by the way. Said Eastman, you know, the creator. I've made all of my archives available for expanded behind-the-scenes content as well as a few top-secret surprises. You need to be part of. Stay tuned. Top secret, man. See, I get nervous when I hear top secret. I work in a classified environment. Whoa, whoa, stop. Trouble. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on the Strangest Kickstarter, Kickstarter, the Kickstarter campaign launching this Halloween. I'm going to be at work. That is so unfair. I will not oh be. Oh, my God. Working one. on Halloween? That's almost as bad as your birthday. Jesus. Yeah, but I'm not going to be number one. I was going to spam click that thing. <laughs> I want to be number one. <laughs> I don't well, think you get like extra prizes for that, but all right. All right makes all you right. feel good. I get to roll in the like, right, number fair. one. Who's number one? This guy's number one. <laughs> We'll offer, a, we'll offer a host of mind-blowing Kickstarter exclusive TMNT miniatures based on the role-playing game, dice sets, variant book covers, it's all getting all comic booky on us here, art prints by legacy TMNT creatives, a card deck, and more, including special stretch goals. Oh, we're going to have some questions about that. To entice role-playing fans and TMNT fans alike, all products ship in 2024. Hey, we're already in October, folks. That's not far away. Of course, I guess it could be December, right? But, you know, hey, it's not that far away. To be among the first to hear about the entire exciting slate of releases, creators, exclusives, and stretch goals to be unlocked with your support, be sure to go to the Kickstarter page and subscribe for updates. And I'm going to put that in chat now while hopefully Heathen Dog brings in our two special guests for today. And there we go. There we go. Here's the link <laughs> to the Kickstarter. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. <laughs> How well, are you? How are you doing today? We're, 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 uh, <laughs> we're surviving. <laughs> we're surviving. Okay, I, I imagine it's been uh, pretty hectic this last uh, couple weeks. Yeah, it, it's, extremely. <laughs> it's been nuts. Yeah, yeah. But a good, so, good, crazy. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. And we're we're glad that we can finally talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm angry that you kept this from me for however long it was. <laughs> it was personally, you know, you know, personally offended by it. So. I was. <laughs> <laughs> it took nine months. So. Oh wow, that's apparently fast by Hollywood standards. So. Nah, still so, still slow. <laughs> okay. I, that's how I felt, but, you know. But Kevin's like Sean. This is this is going really well. Yeah. <laughs> We're just really ambitious, and yeah. Well, Sean, you've got a little of experience in this in the past, right? With dealing with the uh, well, not just Hollywood types, but the comic book industry and so forth. Kevin, especially. Well, yeah. I do. Yeah, sure. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say Sean? You yeah, said yeah. Sean. But my no, apologies. It's Kevin. See, <laughs> I'm showing my nerves, man. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. 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 I, I've. I've. Yeah. We, we've had uh, a fair share of experience with with Hollywood, and um, I would say, generally speaking, it's been. Uh, Really nice working with Paramount. They they seem like they they understand our business. They they try to understand our business, um, and the certainly the gentleman who is handling approvals, he's he's a big fan. We knew we were doing pretty good when our first meeting. Everything was like very formal, very businessy, and then we start talking about the game, and and you know, and and he's like, yeah, yeah, I know. I, my original team and T books are in a shelf right behind me. And we're like, <laughs> all right. 
<laughs> this is going to be good. <laughs> See, exactly. I, I have the revised version too. I, I have it over there. It's not mine. It's it's a uh, it's Cthulhu's. It's it's uh it's my oh, my, my French on. Oh, see now somebody shows up. Oh, the black see he's title. got the original with the <laughs> yeah, black eyes. This, this, this is I my should, first copy. Right? This is the first RPG I ever owned. So oh wow okay. Yeah, I don't know if it's the first one I ever owned, but it is. No, yours was Robotech. I didn't know. I actually just recently got a Robotech. I played really? Robotech. I didn't own it. Yeah. Oh wow. See, and that's a big distinction because I realized. I played like big red box D&D with my friends. I played some D6 Star Wars. Um, but I didn't really get into role playing. I didn't read the rules. You know what I mean? And so yeah. when I went, this really is what turned me into a, it converted me from like a TMNT comics fan into a Palladium fan, really. Because then I got into Ninjas and Super Spies and Heroes Unlimited and Rifts. Mm -hmm. Over Strangely, I, I have no comic background in this. I mean, you can even look at my bookmark here for this one. I'm, I was trying to speed read through this. To, oh, it's, uh, so oh, it's a great book. So so actually, it is, it is really good, but I, I'm not a comic book guy. Me. So I, I got into this by, I, I was a Battletech player, and then I'm pretty sure that I played uh, Robotech before I played TMNT, but I think TMNT is one of the first games. Obviously, Battletech was first games I ever bought, and I ran it. I played it. I loved it. I didn't even realize it, but I played it in the theme of the actual comics because I played it much darker than the cartoon. You know, yeah, it's it's definitely holds a place of nostalgia, and it's a game I would run given the opportunity. I would run it again right now. Oh, it's a it's 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 just a like it's it's one of the best you know I guess versions of the plating system, and that it's just so pure. It's adventure, combat, skill checks. You know, it's 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 it, there's not. There's another stuff to confuse you. <laughs> well, well, when when we got the license, so so I am a comic book guy, as I've mm -hmm. said many times. <clears throat> so it was one of these situations where I was trying to get the uh, the first issue, which I, I didn't realize until recently. They had only printed like three thousand copies, uh, the very first printing of TMNT. Yeah, poor the guys, comic. They're, they're making it out there. Well, yeah, garage, they're, yeah, they're yeah, they're just you know two buddies, you know, who 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 loved comics and wanted to throw together a little. It was a one shot in their mind. Kevin and Pete threw together this fun one shot that combined some of their favorite elements of from their favorite comic books, which was Frank Miller's Daredevil um, and uh, the X Men and some other stuff. And they just threw it together, and it was supposed to be a one shot thing. And it just whoosh, they got you know caught lightning in the bottle. So back in the day, so, sort of like the. Uh, low-end version of wizard magazine there was a publication called the comics buyer's guide it was actually kind of a newspaper kind of thing it came out once a week and there were ads in there for it and you know and, and talk about it and i'm like i need to get this thing and, and finally i was able to grab a copy of uh number two and it was right around christmas as i recall and i i get done reading it and i turned to my wife and i said man this would be a great uh, role-playing game if we could expand it to include all kinds of other animals and uh, the phone rings and it's some guy a writer well a fan with aspirations to become a writer and I've he's seen like, the manuscript and, and he's like did you you know have, have you heard of team nt and i'm like yeah i just got done reading issue two and he's like i think it'd make a great game and i'm like i just said that uh, um, and uh, he wanted to take a shot at writing it. I said, sure. You know, we tracked down Eastman and Laird. We got the rights. Uh, you know, they say I was their second license. I contend I was the first. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, whether we were first or second, we were just right there. And then, uh, you know, the whole time I kept, uh, you know, at, at that time, Eric Woodrick and I would, would talk almost every single night. Uh, he worked midnights, and I often worked late at night. So he had this time period at his job where he's basically just sitting at the desk, you know, watching computer stuff uh, and, and hitting a button, you know, once every two hours. Best so we would talk ever. for yeah. <laughs> so we would talk for two, three hours <clears throat> and we would just, you know, talk about all kinds of different stuff. And he he really became uh, enamored with the turtles as well and with what I wanted to do with it. So when the other manuscript came in and it, it had none of what we knew needed to be in that, that game. What you'd asked for. Uh, yeah, oh, no. Wow. It's, it, well, this guy right away, it was a matter of, you know, this other writer felt that no one wanted to play other animals and that it was all about turtles and, you know, recreating the comic. I've never played a turtle. Yeah, actually, <laughs> me, me, neither have I. And uh, uh, I don't know if Eric did even. Um, but... Uh, 
well, as a game master, I'm sure he did. But uh, so fortunately, Eric and I had talked about it so much um, that when I told him what happened, that this manuscript came in and it was bland and just missed the mark, had none of the things we've been talking about. We've been talking about it so much, and he was even spitballing, well, yeah, Kev, we can do this, we can do that. We, you know, you should have these, these these growth points, and and I'm like, yeah, that sounds great, Eric. But you know, this other guy is working on it, and so when it came in bad, <clears throat> Eric was like, yeah, Kev, well, well, let me do the 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 you know the 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 animal this, and I'm like, okay, and then it'd be like, yeah, yeah, you know, I don't have time to do anything else, but you know, let me do the animal powers, and I'm like, okay, and then it was like, yeah, Kev. I, I don't really have time, but let me. The next thing you know, he wrote the whole freaking thing, or ninety percent <laughs> of it. And I'm like, Eric, that's that's great. And, and we had just talked so much conceptually that he was really on the same page with what I wanted. This is the fastest book he ever wrote for me, for anybody. Um, he banged it out in like four and a half weeks. Wow. Yeah, and, and it was magic. But bear in mind, we had talked about it and what would work and what we needed, what we in, in the game for like five months prior to that. So he was just like, you know, ready to go. In fact, he had, he had developed a couple of things already that he had been play testing with his own group because Eric just loved game concepts and, you know, rules and all that kind of stuff. So when, when the other manuscript was insufficient, Eric was ready to just dive right in and, and did and, and cranked out a masterpiece. You know, it's just, it's, it's, it's perfect. It was everything I, I, I wanted to be. And we had, I can't tell you how many calls. I mean, we probably spoke five times a day um, just on the turtle stuff where he'd call me up and like, yeah, I got these ideas for, for, for growth steps. And, you know, Biley, what do you think of Biley? And I'm like, Eric, it's fantastic. It works really well. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm going to play test it tonight. And then he'd call me after he had play tested it. And we'd talk for, you know, another hour uh, and, and how that worked or not. And then, you know, he and I play tested it. And, um, it was just, but it was just, you know, and we were young and we had time. So it was just, you know, so when I say he wrote it in four weeks, I mean, God knows how many hours a day he was putting into that between play test and, and writing and us talking through every point. Um, you know, he probably spent 15 hours a day, <laughs> most days on that thing. So, uh, it was truly inspired and, you know, it kind of, you know, stood the test of time. So this kind of speaks for itself. Absolutely. Well, it's definitely one of my favorites. I'm going to interrupt the stream for just a second. I want to see if this will work. Boom. Not me. No. Them. There we go. I like that a little better because then I can put things on the bottom where you're talking and not cover up faces. <laughs> oh, really? Watch this. See if this works. No, it didn't work. I, I thought we I thought we could flank them. I, I thought we could bookend them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it would be great. Because <laughs> uh, no, not got a couple of... Super chats real quickly. Two dollars to Australian dollars. We got people watching from all over. Mercurius, thank you very uh, much, Mercurius. Are those worth anything? <laughs> wow. Well, it's like he belongs on this stream because oh, there goes that. Oh, no, no. Thanks, Sean. Don't, Bye. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm gonna hit him with Australia shit in a minute. Don't worry. <laughs> Australia will rise again. <laughs> <laughs> bite people in the ass so thank you crafting gamer he gifted him i did not see who it was to i apologize it doesn't show over here but i'm, I'm focused on on the conversation today but thank you crafting gamer for gifting a membership do appreciate that apparently heathen dogs <laughs> starred this one not as bad as working on the turn of the millennium oh no this is what uh when 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 uh someone said oh i have to you you have to you you, you said it you said it. you have to work during uh Oh, Halloween. 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 Oh, yeah, oh, I worked oh. during Halloween. And he said, Yeah, I had to work during Turn of Millennium. Yeah, so did I. Yeah, I was I was I'm the Y2K still pissed guy. About that. that was 23 <laughs> years ago. I'm super pissed. I, I I was a young guy. I had a I had a fiance, parties lined up. Oh no, Y2K's <laughs> a thing. Like, no, bitch, I work in IT. I2K Y2K is not a thing. It's not a thing. <laughs> yeah, well, the higher ups want it. I, I was <laughs> I was at the missionary training center in Provo, Utah. Ugh. That was fun. Uh, <laughs> I, I was I, underground I, in a fucking <laughs> hole. Wait a minute, were you were you were underground you were out of the Air Knox Force Center, by then? Just just watching mm, everything. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're two thousand. No, yeah, I, yep. I joined the Air Force in two thousand eight. Yes, I joined in ninety two. <laughs> no, I joined late. I, I I did other stuff first. Like oh, yeah. I guess. Hopefully I don't look too much my age. Hopefully I don't act my age. Uh, Malachi says, welcome back, Kevin and Sean. 
and two year. real dollars. What's that? Yeah, two real dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and for 20 real dollars, Squirrel Hermit. Good to see you, Squirrel Hermit. Hey, oh, can't wait for this one. One of the first RPG loves of mine. Same. Absolutely. Okay, see, I'm having trouble, as, as an aside, I'm, I'm having trouble understanding why TMNT holds so much fascination <laughs> with folk. Now, the, b- before, you, before you answer, uh, even in chat just now, a lot of it, a lot of it was like Robotech and TMNT. Robotech come first. Robot- I did Robotech first, then went to TNT, then went to R- then went no, not not Rifts, then went to Ninjas and Super Spies, as Sean was saying, and then Rifts, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Or or you know, uh, Heroes Unlimited. Yeah, Heroes right? Unlimited was was my yeah. follow up to TMNT. Yeah, but uh, for me, anthropomorphic animals is gross. I just don't like it. Yep. See, don't, don't I'm sorry, but I don't want to talk about your sexual fetish. <laughs> 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 Back to the Cherry 2000 conversation. There you go. Yeah. Hey, you get, hey, in my role-playing games, I'm a humanist. I oh, If there's a human option, I play a human. But, you know, in, in some games, there's just not. And I get it, and that's fine. But with what really gets, gets my goat, grinds my gears, <laughs> is that uh, when you mix human with something else, you are watering down what it means to be the superior race, which is human. See, Please don't. So, you're, I don't. You're, I don't you're understand. Understand. This is six kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. You do why see the empire of humanity forming right now, coming. right? It's, what book of jubilees is this? What we're so, talking so, about? so you hate <laughs> you hate thundercats. You hate all kinds of things. Like huh? I said, in in some places, human is not an option, and I understand it, with the with the framework of the world you built, human is not an option for some of these things, and I get it. But um, so I, I I can answer that. Uh, yeah, I'm sure go you ahead. Can no, too, we but, can both talk about it. Go but, ahead. So so Start first of all, there's no reason you can't play a human in the TMNT game. Uh, and, and certainly you can incorporate, you know, Casey Jones, AP, you know April yeah, and, Nero, right. Right? and you can incorporate superheroes from Heroes Unlimited or Ninja and Super Spies into your team and T game and vice versa. It's always intended that way. I think, I, 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 think I, th- I think you're kind of overthinking it even <laughs> dog, because it, it, I'm going to quote, quote George Lucas. Why does everybody love, you know, Chewy? Because in his mind, it was sort of the dog you know, companion and everyone, you know, every kid I did, I think even you did heathen dog. And once, once in time in your life <laughs> loves animals and loves the idea of playing an animal. Well, it- now, yeah, you're right. At one point I did, but I, but, but then I realized that human is the only way to go. And I just started flaying him alive or some other nonsense, psychopathic book. No, come on, man. Quit maligning me on, on in public. Like, <laughs> well, no, you're you're doing all yourself, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> We're not doing Jack. You're, you're paying cats, yourself. cats, on the other hand, they can die in a hole, but dogs. That's, <laughs> that's the thing. It's so fun. So you could play a cat. You could play a hamster. You can play an iguana. I no, mean, no. If you're going to cheat. In the first version of TMNT, weasel. you play a weasel. Yep. If you're weasel, cheat, anybody who comes out and says, I- I'm going to be a wolf, I'm going to be this. I- the- my first thing is, I'm going to be a weasel because that is how you cheat at, at the yep. original. They laugh TMNT. at you. They, they will, people will laugh at you. I'm going to play a weasel. Oh, you're a little bit. They, they, will, they will make fun of you right up until combat starts. Yeah, <laughs> I was both and happy then, and disappointed that after the bomb fixed the weasel. <laughs> 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 but uh, but uh, let, me, let me flip the script for just a moment. Sure. Now, this is where I'm different, and you guys get to mock me. Okay. I think that people who wear spandex and their underwear outside of their freaking clothes are weirdos, and I would right. rather Just have a bear. Normal stuff I would now. Shut rather up. have bear. That isn't how they started, and you know that. And that isn't how you got into the comic books, and you know that. I'd rather have some a bear with some vicious teeth going, ah, like, you know, trying to eat somebody's throat out than, oh, look at me. I wear sparkly blue, and I shoot eye beams out of my face. <laughs> Wow, well, you, I, I love you know, Cyclops. He was one of my favorite. Characters. I know, right? He didn't wear a tutu. He didn't do <laughs> sparkling stuff. He didn't do a pirouette before. Well, he well did the, the point to be ID. to be a little more serious. The point was to show. I mean, people have different tastes, and and I, I think that, and that's one of the things, especially when you can uh, put it in with Heroes Unlimited. All of a sudden, you've got everything you could want to be. 
Well, and the one thing I'll say as a child of the 80s, if you remember like Flight of the Navigator and oh. um, Last Starfighter and a, oh. a bunch of other, you know, E.T., right? There was a lot of movies where there was a monster, whether or it could be a robot, it could be a dinosaur, yeah. but alien, sure, sure. But, you know, you have it, it, it could be anything, right? So it could be an ancient evil in some movies. It's really weird when you watch like, you know, never any story, but mm. the kid makes friends with the monster. It's the friend sure. and the monster and together. They're a powerhouse, but the only person that really understands the monster is the kid, right? And that's kind of where I think where the turtles come from, right? Because they could be lurking, mutant yeah. animals could be lurking in your in the in the weird park near your house, or yeah, you know, in the sewers in New York. The right? alligator in the sewer, that's right. Exactly. And or then Chuck. the other thing is, is then you can also build your own monster, right? And mm -hmm. that's a fun idea. And that's one of the favorite things that people love about whether it's ninjas and super spies or heroes unlimited or even riffs, a lot of people just love those random character yeah. background tables or nightbane, you know, who yeah. limited, um, you know, what powers, what's the morphous. So I think that turtles hits that same kind of thing, but on a level that kids can really get and adults. Right. And it also yeah. was for me, I, I, First encountered it as the cartoon. Then um, my my dad's best friend, my uncle Mark. He we're, we're still friends. I just called him the other day, you know, to tell him that the the deal was official. Um, he was a doctor and he was there the day I was born. So he got me the graphic novels and I was like ten and that was like really edgy, right? Mm -hmm. um, when I got those graphic novels because they're they're very bloody and violent and I, I was like this is freaking cool. <laughs> and so I really got into it and and not a lot of comics were necessarily like that back yeah. in in the eighties. And so then when I traded, I think, I don't know if it was some old Battletech stuff or what, I traded some old RPG stuff or, no, I didn't, I wasn't into RPGs yet. It was been some old like Battletech stuff. I was Battletech stuff actually, because my mom was like, you never should have traded away your Battletech stuff. But, but that's how I got this is I, I traded it. So um, I actually got in late. I wasn't like one of those kids that was waiting for this RPG to come out or something. I found it through a friend of a friend who was like, yeah, you know, Same you really, really like this turtle stuff. So, um, so yeah, I, I, I was like, oh, cool. And then I was like, this is a game I can play with my friends. And, but yeah, I think that's, and, and, and like Kevin said, you know, being able to create all these different types of characters. And then when you add in, this is the shoe in, right? When you add in the different martial arts and stuff, it just, oh, it actually, becomes this whole like B movie scene where you can do all kinds of stuff and tell all kinds of stories. Actually, um, someone, someone in chat said that, uh, that the uh, Ninjas and Super Spies book is the, is the martial arts annex book for TMNT. It's exactly yeah. how we treated it. <laughs> and you could use it to generate your human characters. So Casey Jones would be probably, you know, one of those heroes that has just like, yeah. or you know, that you could you probably do Casey Jones using physical mastery too. And heroes, yeah, but, yeah. but either way, you know, um, but yeah, that's, I, I, for me, that's part of it is just, it, it, it really struck a chord. And then, I could talk for a long time as an author about like the dynamics between the different characters, um, you know, the four man band that you've got there mm -hmm. um, with, with Raphael, of course. Movie. Yeah. Right. And, and Leo and, and Donnie and Mikey. Yeah, whatever. Raphael and, go in with and, attitude or don't go in at all. All right. right? All right. Hang on. Hang on. So, <laughs> but, uh, I, I, have, I have a question about the book. Yeah. Right now uh, it's, it's a, it's not just a word for word, you know, reprint, right. Is it, is it refreshed for the current, so what it is, uh, is it is a reissue. It's a reissue of the original book, but I'm doing an editing pass through the entire book. Mm -hmm. So there will be a lot of things that are going to be clarified or cleaned up or adjusted, but it's not, it's not a new book. No. It is, it, it's, think of it as a revised, 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 <laughs> yeah. uh, TMNT and other yeah, strangers. I mean, it's, it's a lot with which, what we did with Cyberworks collection. It okay. is, I would say a, a little bit step beyond that on the editorial Well, a big pass. step because, right. It's and, 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 also, and also full color art. Yeah, we okay. we we brought full in color we brought in some of the best artists around. Yeah, there. actually, Kevin Eastman, we were showing him the art, uh, the color work. He said it's some of the best color work he's ever seen, and he used to own Heavy Metal Magazine. So Still does, I think. does he? Okay, so either way, <laughs> he's been around the block a few times. It's so so um, a lot of the new material will come in ways of so there'll be a lot of little tweaks and cleanups, but for the most part. So, yes, you know, it's it's going to be. The, so, the, so this is let's we'll show you how the so there's going to be two volumes that we're bringing back the original series of six books as. So the 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 first book is going to be the TMNT and other strangeness. Plus, sure. it's going to have trucking turtles and turtles go Hollywood in it. Okay. And then the second book is going to be uh, transdimensional TMNT, TMNT adventures, and uh, TMNT guide to the universe. 
And both of the books have new cover art yep. by Freddie E. Williams, colored by Mike Majestic. And um, interior, um, we have, well, a couple of colorists, but it's it's uh, primarily um, Mike Majestic. And he we didn't realize how good he was at color. Yeah, I mean, he's... Yeah, he, he he did a lot of I, I he I, I asked him one day I was like hey Mike do you do you do colors because I've seen him do some really cool stuff just for his own side projects and he would just show it to me like hey look at this isn't this cool and I was like those are really cool colors and he found out he he did colors for a few years yeah. on some comic book series yeah, yeah. Okay. and he's really good and he's, oh, and he's, he's so great. you asked him hey do do you do colors he's like yeah <laughs> well and Kevin I was worried that he wouldn't enjoy the color work as much as doing original art yeah. But he loves the color. Oh, yeah. He really is enjoying it. He's really dug in. He's really dug. I mean, we're talking. Uh, let me tell you, some of the stuff we can't show you yet because all of it has to go through an approval process. Yeah. Sure. And um, for various reasons, we've been focusing on like the cover art and what the promo image is going to be, um, so we can start promotions. Um, but um, a lot of it's done. Um, yeah. th this book is all done, right? And he's okay. he's yeah. deep into the other books. Um, but. Uh, We've got. He went and researched the lights used in the '80s in New York City versus the lights used yeah. in the '80s in, say, Tokyo, um, wow. because they do use different chemicals and they cast different yeah. kinds of lighting. And so when you see, like, it blew me away. I mean, he's he's taking panels where in the background there was nothing; it was just white or black. Now there's a bokeh effect, and you're like, oh, that's an alley in New York City. Yeah, cool. it's stellar. Yeah, it's... I mean, it was just. It was like he was like, "Is that okay?" He's like, "I ad libbed a little bit." I'm like. Yes, <laughs> you know, we, we start talking about like what location would this scene be in? What location would this scene be in? Um, so that's been really fun to work with him and art direct through that. Um, yeah, and, and then there's going to be a whole slew of brand new material yes. that will appeal more to, to fans. Um, so we, 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 we've got like we've that, got yeah. all kinds of key artists um, from from team and T history. Uh, to and including and palladium, palladium artists history. that are doing basically pinup pages, full page spreads, think of them as splash pages. If it was a comic book, <clears throat> this is all new art, yeah, full page of color art depicting the turtles, depicting our characters, yeah, often, like often depicting them together, like fighting the terror bears, or you know, oh, the terror, I forgot about them, <laughs> yeah, yeah, or Leo, you know, like Raphael and 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 Caesar's, you know, Caesar's from Caesar's Weasels back to back or something, right? Okay. And, and, and those are all full color as well. Um, there's going to be sort of behind the scenes making of. There's going to be all kinds of original art, um, like like before they got inked and 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 toned. Yeah, yeah terror, terror bears. bears. Yep. <laughs> yep. So, and that's one of the things that was really cool. Kevin is like he blows me away, and I, I don't know if I ever told you guys about the time when he pulled something out, and I started yelling for like 20 minutes as he pulled out each new piece of art I didn't even know existed. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that whenever we get further down the line with some other product lines. But, what else do you have hiding in your, in your fucking safe? He, he did the same thing with Turtles. He pulls uh, out this thing, and I'm like, what's this? I've never seen this piece of art before. I'm a rabid Turtles fan. Like, what is all this? And he's like, oh, yeah, this is just stuff that we, we don't knocked around we had, but or couldn't use, used, you know? or it was used in one advertisement yeah. in this you know in marvel or something you know and it, so it and then and then of course we're talking to kevin eastman and kevin eastman's like oh I'll, I'll go digging into my archives too you know and so we're it's just like yeah when it says a thousand percent i mean i i really would say kevin eastman has just i mean when he just heard word of it yeah we before we even talked to him um apparently uh, the 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 whole Mirage uh, Studios comic crew um, were and all the people uh, a bunch of the artists at IDW were just really excited um, and uh, Kevin Eastman has just been like yeah he wants to be involved yeah I mean he just he's he is very busy very successful man and the fact that he's like I want to paint a cover I want to do this let me talk to Peter about being involved with this. yeah and then he, yeah I was about to say then he reached out to Peter Laird who basically you know, doesn't do much anymore. peter and kevin haven't done anything directly together brand new in, in at least 20 years it might be longer yeah and yeah, apparently they did, they did recently did a cover together right and, and they're they're doing stuff together for for this book i don't know if we can say what yet but no i, I i'd rather be careful yeah on yeah, that, yeah. And uh, you're not going to tell anybody but us girls here. I mean, <laughs> well, it's just, we just want to, we want, we don't want to overpromise if, if, say, a time means yeah. one specific out of a series yeah. of things doesn't happen because these, these guys are, I mean, 
no pressure on them. If they want, if they want to do this, we're yeah. super happy to have yeah. them do yeah. it. If they can't do a certain thing, then no big deal. Well, yeah, right? like, I, I, and that's a, we just don't want to say something and then yeah, oh that, that makes sense. Yeah, you know, a great right, example right. is I I exchanged an email with with Kevin Eastman, and, and we had kind of been, you know, we we were really tight in the early days. I mean, come on, like I said, we were one of our, their very first licensee licensees, and. You know, we worked intimately together. On yeah, they did the art for the this. First, for I mean, I'm the guy who's art directing Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird, and uh, you know, and, and other guys from from Mariah Studios, uh, Lawson. Jim Lawson and uh, Eric Talbot and whoever. You know, great guys, all of them great, and you know, we're all around the same age, so we're all peers at this point. We're all up and coming, um, so we were pretty tight. In fact, when Kevin Eastman learned, because uh, he's a sweet guy, he did one of the nicest people on the planet. Uh, when Kevin Eastman found out that I was never able to track down a uh, first printing of TMNT one, he sends me one of his last three copies. I mean, Kevin, Kevin, this guy right here. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to write a uh, um, a weekly update about it. But uh, getting on a video call with Kevin Sambita, Kevin Eastman, and then we had uh, um, the executive from Paramount in there, yeah. and it was so funny. They're obviously the, these two guys go way back and they're old friends. And it was really cool to hear them reconnect. And, you know, Kevin tells me his side of stories. And it was so funny because Kevin told one of the stories and Kevin Eastman told the other side about when they met the licensing agent and oh, stuff yeah, that yeah. Kevin recommend that you know, Kevin knew. And so it was just, it was just cool. It was cool. And I, I asked, we were like, Jeff, did you want to say anything to the exec? And he was like, he un he because he just sat there for like an hour and a half, two hours with yeah. his his screen muted. Yeah, just, and he was like just grinning, the just grinning time. the whole time. He's like he's like, no, my heart is full. <laughs> back to mute. <laughs> it was so funny. It was nice. so funny. Um, but uh, yeah, and I was I was trying to act cool, you know, because here I am, <laughs> on, you know, in a chat with Kevin Eastman, and he's just he's just they're obviously having a great time, and and, and we were all having a good time, and he was just so excited to be involved with this that. Um, yeah, that, and that's the whole thing is, uh, you know, for people to understand is, you know, we got this license, but the number one thing that we get asked by fans all the time, when are you going to bring back? And they want the original, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and, and I, you know, do we want to talk about the mass? Like, this is a good time to talk about the mass. So oh, sure. We're going to do a couple of versions of the book. So, well, so one, Kevin Eastman insisted on painting a cover yeah. and we already had the other two in progress by Freddie Williams and Mike Majestic. And we're like, we're not going to tell Kevin Eastman no. <laughs> um, and then, oh, plus, I mean, I was blown away. Yeah. I, that's no, what I Santa, I don't want a present. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Exactly. You know, I, I sent him this email telling him what we're going to do, what our plans are. And, and I never even dreamed of asking Kev For to, do, like to do a new cover. I know he's one of, from Freddie Williams, we who because him and, and Eastman are, are very tight. Uh, and work together a lot. And, and Freddie, if everybody, most people remember Freddie from uh, Riffs. Kevin yeah. found him and had him doing art for Riffs, and now he's taken off in comics. And and, and, and so, so yeah, Freddie E. Williams the second. We're having this great call with him, and he's like, "Oh yeah, Kevin Eastman's like do this kind of stuff. Just having his support would be wonderful." Right. And and right off the bat, he's like, "Yeah, Kevin, this is this sounds great. I'm in it. I'm in it 100. percent Um, you know, uh, I want to do a new painted cover, and I'm like." Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, Kev. <laughs> He's like, I'm gonna go through my, my, my yeah, I mean, and like I'm I like, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what you charge these days, Kev. I don't know if we can afford it. He's like, don't worry about it. I'll, you know, you oh, can wow. afford it. Yeah. You may, we'll, we'll make it happen. And it just, and again, part of it, you know, I've been talking to Sean a lot lately because one of the really awesome things about all this is meeting all these, these new artists, the relationship I have with the old artist. And, and and it's really wonderful connecting with Kevin Eastman again. And part of it is just, you know, when you build relationships with people, and I think that's how we got the license. We were told by a number of, of industry people that <laughs> you, you can't get the Ninja Turtle license. Nobody can. And I'm like, uh, yeah, some of them had tried real hard. You know, and I think a big part of that was when, you know, the Paramount people went to Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird and said, hey, you know, we're thinking of giving them this license. You know this guy, Kevin Sambita? Yeah, is he okay? Is he good to work with? And they went, oh, my God, we love this guy. And, and you know, and the I feeling my kid after him. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and so, um, and then, you know, so, so we're going to have a couple of, we're going to have the two main books. Um, and then we're going to have two, uh, a variant cover for each one, one by Kevin Eastman and one by Sophie Campbell, yep. who's doing IDW turtles right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, she would, she, oh, she plays 
Palladium every week. Yeah. She runs it as a current Heroes Limited game running. So awesome. that was cool too. Yeah. Like same origin story. We both ran into TMNT and other strangeness as kids and it, it affected us permanently. <laughs> um, we're deranged so, now. Sorry. Um, yeah. <laughs> we got oh, the sickness, on. but uh, speaking of, speaking of other, other books, uh, you, those six books you, you chose to merge into two for the, for the new run of TMNT. What prompted you to choose the other, f obviously the source book is the, the, the main book is necessary, but the, the other five, what, well, I mean, what, it's, it's all, it's what, all. What, what made you choose those five specifically? Well, they're turtles specific. Yeah. Can, well, can, yeah, yeah, can, uh, can I, can I interject something here? Cause I noticed a theme with that and see if I'm on base here with this. Um, because I saw a bunch of chats saying, "Hey, why no mutants down under? Why no?" Uh, That's different. That's different IP. Right. Well, exactly. The the all those original, which coincidentally, with the exception of transdimensional and the core book, I have none of those books. <laughs> so, so this is gonna be really good for me because I never got Truck and Turtles or Turtles Go to a Hollywood. A lot of people never did. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. only I did. I never had uh, transdimensional. I yeah, never saw it on a shelf when I was a kid, right? Luckily, I got that one. But uh, but yeah, I mean that that's the point. Is like after the bomb was actually its own deal right After even back thing, then and then mutants honor went underneath that umbrella right rather than so, 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 so yeah, what yeah, i'm yeah. hoping for yeah. is that this opens up the the ip is like maybe we can get some riffs world book versions of mutants down under mutants of the yucatan instead of like these 20 page books that had a good hundred and you know whatever 20 page books uh for those settings if this, if this, this opens well. up a lot down the road depending you know no matter what what specific market approach we take with how we put those things together. Right. Um, but I do like that idea. Right. Instead of lots of little books. Um, but uh, yeah, this opens up a lot of doors. Um, but uh, the main reason is these are all the Ninja Turtles books. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to collect them into something that everyone can get their hands on and have again, because that's, again, that's the number one thing we get asked. In fact, we constantly, it, okay. So another thing we get asked is, you know, people want the original. Uh, some people mentioned the, the red bandanas. So um, one of the things that uh, that we decided when talking to Paramount that is very important to them um, was to have the four color bandanas in the two books. But, but, but um, and it's going to be full color books, right? But we're going to have a variant of each book, which we're calling the black, white, and red edition, which is common in comic books these days. And they're going to be red bandana turtles. And the interior of the book is going to be all black and white with red um, accents. So that will be yeah. they'll all have red masks. Now. Yeah. And, yeah. and so that will be the closest to the original black and white. That'll mm -hmm. be the closest to this original book, um, that, that, that you can get your hands on because it's so funny. Some, you know, I, I talked to a few, we've talked to a few key people, which are also fans. Um, but some are like directors of sales and marketing at important companies that we deal with. And, uh, they're like, Oh, full of color. That's so amazing. Oh, it's gonna be great. And they're like, but what about black black and white version of it? There, it's so funny because what? there's such a love for that original yep. material as it came out. But at the same time, we really want to do it big. We want to do yeah. You want to really be grand, big, not just show. nostalgic, but also right. opulent. You know, like, like right. This is, not, this is special. So some of the opulence is is, yeah. is 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 like the those two extra cover options. I mean, when we had both of them fall in our lap, we're just like, okay, we'll do a variant cover for each one, right? And then. When we had, uh, you know, when that idea was what was suggested, um, that we were just like, that's a great fit that solves, you know, something that people want. Um, one of the things that a lot of people randomly will say is, "What about the game, the Old Turtles Game Master screen?" So we're going to do that again. Oh, that's one of the questions. You know, I mean, the question like, off my list. Hold on, let me cross that one off. So, and and then the the other, so that's that's three versions of each book now, right? Um, to uh, one cover variant and then a variant edition. And then we're also going to have uh, the, the second cover variant is going to be a mutagen green foil stamped cover. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, yeah. And and that is uh, most likely going to be Eastman and Laird um, illustrations yeah. for those. Oh, so, cool. and, and obviously this isn't the book, but it's going to be this kind of something like that. Right. Something yeah. similar to that. Yeah. Maybe a bit more detailed. Yeah. A lot more detailed. We, we, we were like, it could be really simple. And we get back like <laughs> Kevin Eastman is just so excited. Yeah. Which concept do you like? And it was yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it's all, you know, you, you were expecting silhouettes on silhouettes, you know, like it, 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 it comes back like jesus christ there's 18 <laughs> fractal patterns what no, the hell it, is this it, for it, it, yeah. it, it looks like a comic book page we're like we're like kevin you, you know thank you so much you know 
So we're going to do the best we can to, you know, do, I mean, because like, um, we have the cyborg spoil in here. I mean, uh, just like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, just like that one, I'm guessing it'll be something like this where it's actually okay. pretty detailed, pretty detailed for a foil cover. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, um, well, let's go through more of your questions. Oh, but yeah. Anyways, that's just I wanted to explain that the the red bandanas and the and the. Well, actually, I, I want I want to stay on the bandana thing for just a second because sure. that that is well, it's kind of come up in chat here. That's one of the things that I got. I just noticed on discords and YouTube comments and so forth is like they better have the red bandanas. None of this newfangled. So, hey, uh, just so folks know. I'm reading this right now. Well, the names on here should look familiar to you. Kevin Eastman, Peter Laird, and they have four color bandanas in here. Right. Just saying. So, uh, well, the, the <laughs> turtles actually evolved quite a bit yeah. after their initial release. So, yeah. you know, um, like the, they actually on the cover of this book, they evolved quite a bit from some of the forms they had earlier mm -hmm. on. And then very quickly they became, oh, yeah. uh, like in, uh, well, like the cover of Truck and Turtles, or, or if you know, Turtles Go Hollywood or Truck and Turtles. I'm trying to Just find, uh, the cover. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, like in these covers, the turtles, their body shapes, right, mm -hmm. look different than they right, than they right. when they initially released, right? And then uh, quickly you go to. I mean, even by our first source book, the turtles had changed and morphed, and you know they still had the red masks, but you know their look was very different from the human. original. So right. Were... And, Getting and better. that's part of it is we're doing and, and part of this too is like i said um a lot of this is you know we're, we're working with paramount and we want to be friendly right we're we're establishing a relationship because we want to be able to do a whole lot of stuff in the future sure. so um a lot of this is it, it, there are certain things that are important to them and we're like hey we're on board you know? and, we, and to be honest they, they were actually very cool they're very they, they said we could go either way with all red masks, which is what we were originally starting with, or each one having their distinctive color mask. And our, we sat back and went, okay, gamers, and you know, let's face it, old farts like us, we all know them as the red mask yep. characters. And, and that was mainly because the comics were black and white for like the, what, the first 150 freaking issues? Right. So you only saw them on the covers, and they, you know, they're ninja, so they all look the same. And a lot of times it was a three, uh, a, a duo tone. For thirty years, most of the world knows them with the color masks. That's true. Yeah. So we thought we should do it with the color masks, so that you know people aren't confused to give them what they they know. And then honestly, the the black, white, and red edition was the suggestion of of our, our Paramount liaison. And my knee-jerk reaction was, I don't know. And then the more I thought about it, yeah. and Sean, too, he's, we're like, yeah, that's a damn good idea. That and because be it solved a lot of problems, too, because I, I, I want something as close to the original as possible. You know, um, I mean, that was so funny when we initially discussed it, because I was like, Kevin, we should reach out about this license. And, you know, and he'd been had been reaching out over yep. the previous years. Um, but, uh, you know, that was one of the things that initially I was like, full color, but I like the black and white. I like the original, you know, let's, and, and so, but Kevin's like, no, but Sean, we can do this. And, that. and then I was sold. Right. But it, it, it was one of those things where it's like, okay, we can have our cake and eat it too. This is totally possible. This is, this is, um, you know, it's basically art direction and, um, you know, that kind of work. It's, it's not like writing a whole different book. Right. Um, you know, the, the remaster process is a bitch and a half. Um, I'll be straight up. <laughs> Um, it's a lot of work and it's worth it. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm ecstatic to be, be able to do it for this product. Right. Um, I'm already, I don't know why it's not in my hands yet. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is yeah, I mean, that's a lot of work, but Hey, once yes. we've gone through all that, um, then doing a black, white and red edition, we just felt like that's a great way to really do something special for, yeah, the, for the old school fans. Yeah. Too. Especially for, I mean, you know, comic books does this periodically. Well, they'll, they're, they'll do their, their, usual full color comic and then they'll have sometimes they call it noir sometimes they call mm -hmm. it something else but it'll be the black and white version and as an artist i love that because you know as much as i enjoy color sometimes the color obscures the line work and stuff and i want to see that so you know it, it's it's a fun thing to do and for those who want a black and white version with red all red masks you know they can get it yeah 
and and so and we're so we're really excited about that and kevin even is i'm not a, i was never i always had friends that were comic book guys i was really into turtles and the graphic novels so i call myself more of a graphic novel guy because i would just kind of like get into the really cool stuff that made there's it a difference <laughs> i mean i feel like i feel like comic collectors are different than guys that just buy the graphic novel of the successful stuff right well fair so, enough right you, 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 you know, know what i'm saying the, the uh, trade paperbacks you know where it's it's a whole run after yeah. it's after it's done years ago and you're like oh right. and everybody's like this was, no, this was bitch, awesome I, okay i'll I buy the graphic every novel, month you know? buying every month's comic right. to get that story so so in battle tech terms it's the fact that i'm proud that i have the original shrapnel the I stand okay. makes me stand out over other people. That's you don't have to know what it is because I'm the real collector. It also right. makes you feel superior, which is the most important thing. What's that? <laughs> he makes you feel superior, which is the most exactly important thing. Right. Yeah. and it's in good condition. So, let, wait, we have so you said you want to get some questions. We're gonna do that. We're gonna get some chat first because yes. some, some of this is pretty fun. Well, I've got some super chats in here as well. So well, I, I'm gonna go through that. Uh, me too. Christopher Sheen says uh, <laughs> more hype for for this than the last five Marvel movies.